So you guys want to do some custom animations. I get that. That is pretty fun. But you need to know that making custom animations isn't as simple as keying a hand from top to bottom. You need to follow some basic animation principles that had been the guideline for years now. There is a reason why um, companies hire specific jobs for animators. It's because animation is a lot more technical than you might think it is. But let's start with the basics. So there is two ways to animate things into the studio. One, you may go with VNGE that has its own um, keyframing system, or you may go with the more commonly used timeline. So in this video, we're gonna be mm, messing with timeline. If you guys want, I can do another specific video on VNGE. There is a few cool features that you find inside VNG that you cannot find into the timeline. But the timeline is way more simple to learn. It's very more intuitive. So first off, what I'm going to be showing you is how to basically make your timeline work. So first off, go into your little button over here called time right click to open your timeline and this is it um, I have done a video on timeline before but uh, yeah this is gonna be a little bit of a recap so that everybody can be up to date so I'm gonna choose this little heart over here so there's a lot of stuff over here so these are all the things that you can mess around in your timeline everything that is over here you can keyframe it but for starters, what we're going to be doing is keyframing this heart so that it goes left to right. In order to do that, we need to find our selected object position. So if you scroll over here, you're going to see selected object position, obviously. So now to make a keyframe, you got to middle click with your mouse on the timeline. Once you middle click, you can see there's a bit of slight change in your uh, modifiers over here. And you're going to see an interpolates and go position. That means that this over here is going to be the line in which your keyframes are going to be affected for the position of the heart. So right now we have a keyframe in which if we click, this is going to open the keyframe menu you can drag this menu around to see better your scene I'm gonna explain this a little bit further later because as you can see this is a relatively complex menu if you look at it right now um, so I'm gonna close that to scroll through your timeline you can see there is this red bar that goes from top to bottom you need to click into this black rectangle and drag wherever you want it on your timeline. If you want to snap this red bar to these little lines over here, these represent seconds, by the way. So over here, we have a duration of 10 seconds for our animation. If you want to reduce the amount of bars over here, seconds, you just need to retype the new value that you want. For instance, I'm going to type three seconds, so I'm going to have one, two, three. <laughs> what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be snapping to these bars over here, these seconds, by maintaining shift and dragging your rectangle. This is going to snap your time to um, exactly two seconds, let's say. Now. What we're going to be doing is selecting this heart over here, dragging it to the right, and shift, middle click, and your keyframe is going to be snapped to two seconds. Now, let's go back to zero seconds and press play. Simple as that. Now what you can do also is increase the speed by going into the time scale over here. For instance, I want it to be twice as fast as this. 
hard goes twice as fast. Let's say a hundred times faster. I'm pretty sure you get the drift. Let's put it to one again. Now you have learned the basics on how to keyframe positions. I think this is a good segue into my next lesson, which is going to be control C, control V. That means you can control keyframes and copy and paste them into other values. For instance, I want to copy the first keyframe over here, select it till it's green, control C. Sometimes the it's weird, uh, the, there's a slight bug when you do that. But anyways, you have your keyframe selected. Go to the last frame, shift snap, control V. This means it's going to copy the first keyframe and copy it to the last second. That means that now we have a loop. This is very important, especially when you're doing animations for character because you want your animations to be looping. You don't want to get the end of the animation and your character is snapping back into position. That doesn't look natural at all. So always when you actually the <laughs> first thing I have to do is once I do my first keyframe, I copy that one to the end of the animation sequence. Let's do the same thing for each one of these. I'm going to go into my heart over here, copy the position, go into my diamond over here, and enter that value. Shift, middle click to snap that, control C on that first keyframe, control V on the last keyframe. That means we have a similar animations for both of these. I'm going to do the same process for this ball over here, so I'm going to be able to show you the next lesson. Okay, so we have three objects that are having the same animation. So what I want to be showing you next is how to change the speed in which these objects get to the second keyframe. Well, it's not much about speed, it's about curves. As you can see, once you click a keyframe, this menu pops up and you get this curve over here. This curves show the acceleration and deceleration, if deceleration is actually a word, in which your object is going to travel through those keyframes. So this first one over here, once you understand it's pretty simple, it's going to be linear. So there won't be any acceleration or deceleration during that animation. So let's say over here, this one. There is a smooth in and a smooth out. Let's select this one for the sphere. Next, go into your diamond. Let's select this one over here. As you can see, there is no curve. There is one over here, but it's a straight line to the right and another one to the top. That means your diamond isn't going to go linearly. It's not going to go smoothly from left to right. It's going to snap into position without any ease in or ease out. Let's try another one so we can catch the drift on the heart. Let's go with this one over here, which smooths in and smooths out. As you can see, they all get to the end of the keyframe at the same time. The difference is, some get there a little bit smoother and others get there a little bit choppier. I'm speaking about this diamond over here. So this is especially important when you're going to be keyframing some limbs. You don't want your character to be feeling like a robot. So most of the time, what I do is I go with this one over here. It gives a nice ease in and ease out. What you can also do is keyframe the curve yourself by middle clicking this curve over here. 
I don't recommend doing this because um, I don't see really the the, the big uh, big thrill of it. It's nice to be able to mess with these curves, but you pretty much have everything you need with these presets over here. So now that you know the basics about timeline, I think it's it's time we start by animating an actual character. So. Let's go into your kinematics and be sure to turn on these IKs, FK, IK, so we get these FKs and these IKs. So I'll be able to show you how to animate your IKs and FK. <laughs> Man, what a what a word mash. So open up your timeline, right click. What we want to be doing right now is we're going to be giving that character a little bit of a head bob. So select that character, show your controllers. Now pick your FKs over here. So FKs run on rotation. So even if you try to move them, you're not going to be able to access your axis. <laughs> so be sure to select your rotation. Go down over here, and as you may remember, what we did before was mess with the position, but now we want to mess with the rotation. So, middle click inside your timeline to set a keyframe on this very same neck piece. So, simple as that, shift to snap on your seconds if you feel like it, rotate, and shift middle click to add a keyframe. As you can see, your character is now animated. As I said before, what I do is I control C and control V to the end of the keyframe, excuse me, to the end of the timeline, so that once we click play, there is actually a loop, so it doesn't snap at the end of the animation. A great way to make your animation way smoother is select all of your keyframes, control click, and going to this curve over here with the ease in and ease out. As you can see, the ease in and ease out makes the animation way more natural. Let's add another FK by selecting the head, going to rotation, middle click, and it's over here. As you can see, you can um, see that they are renamed appropriately, but sometimes you're gonna get a lot of keyframes in this interpolates menu. So what you can do is select the one you want, right click, and there's a few options to see over here. What I'm looking for is a rename. In this case, I'm gonna call it head. Let's rename this one to neck. So go back into your heads. Let's make sure the head looks still up in our direction. So that means the neck is just going forward, but the head is not pointing downwards. So control C your first one, control V on your last. Let's be sure to select all of these. You can drag these over here, but sometimes it's a bit tricky to get the first one. So sometimes I rather do control click and select all of them manually. So once you're in your curve, select the ease and ease out curve and you should be getting something more natural. So we have a good looking custom FK animations. So what I want to do next is obviously I'm not going to be doing an erotic custom animations. So what I want to do is show you a common problem that I have been having for a while now. Hips, hips, as you can see, you have two controllers. If you're going to want to be doing these hips so that they go into the same direction, forwards and backwards at the same times, you can't do that just by hand because there's always going to be one hip that's going to be going further than the other. As you can see, the gizmo over here doesn't even go straight in the right direction. 
So, what we're going to be doing is pressing Control N. This should open your Nodes Constraint menu. Now, what I used to be doing is parenting, for instance, this shoulder, set as parent, and selecting the driven IK and pressing set as child. This is going to make sure that this shoulder drives this one. So what we want to be doing is using the current position so that the shoulder doesn't go elsewhere and press link position. Add new. Now we have a nodes constraint. When we mess with this shoulder and mess with the other one, which is great in theory, but is it sometimes messes up dearly your scene, especially when you want to load that scene over again on another session later on. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be deleting this node over here and doing something that is less destructive. Going to your ads menu into your model and select any general shape over here. Let's go for Hmm, I'm thinking about this way too hard. Let's go just with a simple sphere. Bring this sphere up to where you want it to be. This doesn't really matter, but it's easier to notice where your sphere is because at some point you're going to be having a sphere for your shoulders, your hips, your belly. Well, you don't need one for your belly because it doesn't have two sides to it, but I think it's important to have some sort of control or rig over your custom animation. So, once you have this sphere loaded on, set it as parent. Go into your character, select the right shoulder. Wait, is that a right? Oh, that's the left shoulder. <laughs> set it as child, use current value, and add new. Do the same thing for your other shoulder, but only set it as child, since our sphere is already set to parent. Use current and add new. Control N to close this menu again. And if you select this sphere, both shoulders will follow at the same time. So this is a great workaround if you don't want your scene to be crashing and your hips and shoulders to follow at the same position at the same time. As you may figure, when we go back into our timeline, what we're going to be changing is the position of this sphere. Be sure to have your sphere selected. That's my messenger. Going to the position tab, middle click. And now we can change our characters, both shoulders at the same time without having to get one that is further than the other. Snap to the second you want. Onwards, shift, middle click, snap. Copy that first keyframe. Go to your last one. Select all of them. Ease in, ease out. Now we have a nice, smooth looking animation. Custom made and you can be sure you're going to be the only one with this particular animation. It gets a lot more complex than this, but as you may have figured, I can't be doing anything erotic into the YouTube's platform. But this should give you all the basics you need to start making your own custom animations. And the timeline has way more than only position and rotation. You can change your camera position, time scale, means time speed, change your top states, that means you can change your character's clothing states. That goes for everything possible. Um, blush, eyes openness, mouth openness. Mouth openness is very important. I use it a lot personally, and it really does do a big difference. This is Level M22. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like or even maybe a subscribe to be kept to date on other Illusion Games tutorials. Have a good one, everyone.